I'm not going to, you know, um, give a lot of personal stories probably, but I, this is kind of what I'm trying to do is the nuts and bolts and how to do it and how, to di how I did it, including my mistakes. So you got to transfer clients with your ex-partner. You divide up old business. You do things. I, I think folks should go get a cheap URL on GoDaddy, build a website, and, and get a phone number. I didn't do that. What I did is I wanted Burger Law, so I found a guy named Ernest Burger in California, and I bought his URL from him. He had had it for, 20, for 15 years, never did anything with it. I paid him some money, and I took it because I thought that was a good URL for me. And then I built uh, three websites over two years. So I hired someone to build me a website. They came in. They, they, they built me a website, and they were supposed to do all this stuff. And they didn't do it. And I ended up putting all this content on my, on my site and did it myself. So I fired them, and I got another guy. And that other guy, the next guy, was actually pretty good. He was a local guy. He, he wasn't a marketer, but he, he did a great job for me for, for uh, bringing it up, doing a lot of stuff, till about September when, and in October and September, I moved my, I thought my business had grown. I moved over to Seth and Blue Shark to, to help me out. Uh, and what I'm doing. Um, and then I got a phone number, 314-542-2222. My old number was 542-9999. I tried to, I wanted to carry some of that energy from my old phone number. Probably not worth it, but it doesn't matter. My number is what it is. And then I had lunch with my friend Jim Hacking. Jim and I had become friends. We had mutual friends over the years. And he looked at me at lunch, and, he, and, and here I am, I, you know, I even in my old firm, I, I, paid, I had an internal marketing person, paid someone a full-time salary to do all my Facebook posts, all my stuff. I had her for about a year and a half, and she was okay, but, but, but that wasn't a good solution for us. I've tried reach local here. I've, I've, we tried so many different things, and all I did in the past was throw money at marketing, not really think about it, not own it, not take that responsibility, because I'm a fancy trial lawyer. I don't need to get you know, get my hands dirty, right? Jim looked at me across the lunch table and said, I will never forget this. He said, how many marketing books have you read? Mm -hmm. And my answer was none. I had never read one. I had never read one. So what Jim did is he loaned me some of his books. And, and, and if you go to Jim's office, and then he, and he loaned me some of the books, I read them, and I surrendered to that. And then he brought me in his office, and, and, he, and he sat down and helped me with a marketing plan. Um, and, and he has this whole, he has more m marketing books than anybody I've ever seen, although I don't know how many I've seen, but he's got this whole shelf of these marketing books. And he had all kinds of great ideas. And so I decided to own it, right? And, and to do that. So I did that. So I decided my marketing plan. What am I going to do? What are my assets? Who's my perfect client? Who am I marketing to? So uh, I'm not a new lawyer. I have some gray hair. My mom's a former judge. I try cases. So Jim thought that I would have a good connection with other lawyers and referral business and get that message out because I know folks, all right? And so I started to do that. I also decided to have something of a web presence and to get that out. I decided immediately I wasn't going to do TV or billboards or that kind of stuff. I found their efficacy to, efficacy to be low, the ROI low. Six months before my firm blew up, we went on TV for a while didn't see a lot of return on investment. Our back end wasn't ready for it. We did, we had some billboards too that were kind of hit or miss, right? We're throwing money at stuff and our back end really wasn't ready for it to the cases we did. We did a lot of stuff right. We did some stuff wrong, probably how I am today. Um, but anyway, I decided that it's my, it's, and, and then the other thing is, is Jim told me and I learned before you go outside and try to get the cases from outside, look inside, right? Like whenever we decide challenges in our life, right? Hey, that's your problem. No, really, it's my problem, right? But so I looked inside. What, who were my contacts? Who were my clients? Who were my friends? What did my list look like, okay? So I did that too. So mind your past clients and friends before you look outside. Um, and then the issue, and then if you're starting a new firm, the question is do you want partners, right? And so partners are great. I mean, there's a tension in partners. So let's talk about that for a second, just share my, some of my thoughts on that. Um, partners are great in many ways. You know, you learn from them. You spread the risk. You have other people uh, uh, doing that with you. Um, you, have, you may have divided uh, 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 abilities. So you have the trial lawyer. You have the marketer. You have the firm runner. You, some guy may do criminal. Some guy may do PI. You know, you have different stuff. There's also tensions in a partnership, right? 
And as over the years, sometimes that can develop. Does, your, does one of the partners not want to be on the website? Is one of the partners not going to do the marketing parts of this? Um, is one of the partners not going to want to work as hard or make as much money or that kind of stuff? You don't know how these things are going to go. So yeah, there's good sides of it. And yeah, there's bad sides of it. So there's that tension as you go along. And um, one of the things that, you know, in, in handing, having any relationship like that, you want to have good communication, try to work out things, adjust things over the time. My, uh, and so that's, you know, those are just some issues in partnership. People are like, yeah, I want to have a partner. I want to do this and this and this. You know, there's also a diffusion of responsibility, you know. You know, I'm not going to do that newsletter because my partner doesn't give me those articles. I got to do it all on my own. I don't want to have to do all these Facebook posts and all this stuff. I'm doing that. I don't want to, my, he's not doing it, all right? Or he's getting in at 10, I'm getting in at 8, or et cetera, et cetera. So that can happen too over time. Um, not that there's any answer. Partnerships are good. Soul practi practices are good. John's mentioned he's never been happier since going on his own. I know Mitch has good partnership success. So there's different. We all have different stuff. Um, but the one great, one thing I will, my, my uh, ex-partner, the one great thing he told me, it taught me was hand out your card and get over that, um, that um, introvertedness that I have. That we all have part of us that are like that introvert, extrovert. Hand out your card, give it out, talk about yourself, get that business. Never hire a moving company twice. Always hire a different moving company because you get to hire your, hand out your card to a different group of people. Just that simple idea like that, to, to, to not be afraid to talk about your business. And you'd kind of want to be a little shy, you're, hey, in case you get injured. Uh, no, you know, but, uh, but you got to do it. You got to put your out. Can, you, can I help people? I help people. Uh, here's my card. You may, never need to need, you may never need to call me, but in case you do, um, there it is. Um, do you have a business plan or a logo? I don't have a business plan. I just do stuff um, today. Uh, but I kind of do, right? Um, there's my fancy logo. Not that great, um, and that and that's still that still is what it is. Some people get a lot of value of that. Maybe they do. I don't know. Um, and then I also was turned on with with Jim and Tyson about Upwork and Fiverr. So these are places where you can get um, logos designed and videos edited and medical records reviewed and all kinds of stuff done at relatively low prices. And then you end up having relationships with good providers under these sources, and you can get stuff done, which is great. Um, you can get URL, website, logo, graphics done for cheap on those if you're just starting out. Now, you got to be careful, too, though, on those, because you do have bad, uh, bad people who, who do work through there. You don't want to go pay someone to give you 5,000 links to your site that are 5,000 terrible links that are going to damage your, damage your Google juice. Um, do, do you have a Facebook business page? Decide and implement a Facebook and social media presence. What are you going to do and decide to do it? Get your Google My Business page in a geographic Google location. That's basic stuff. You'd be surprised how many people don't have that. It's incredible. You go Google Businesses, I see it all the time where places where I'm going where they don't have that. Um, and because your Google reviews go to that geographical location and go through that Google My Business page. Um, the three most important things in marketing, action, action, action. It's like the real estate joke, right? So it's location, location, location. So regardless of what you're going to do, you're going to make mistakes, you're going to change your mind, you're going to do things differently. As long as you're doing those things and, and taking action on those things, I couldn't advocate that more. Get your list together. That was so hard for me to do. What does that mean? I have a list of contacts, email addresses, names. It's a combination of lawyers and clients and friends, et cetera, et cetera. We have a, a guy in our Infusionsoft work group. His company is get your list together. That's all he does for people. No one wants to do this. It's, you sit down, you go through your contact list and make sure it's cleaned up and right. And I spent hours and hours doing that in, in December and January. I would be up all night. I'd be deleting my ex-partner's friends off that list and doing mine. And then my Google Sheet, I would lose it. And I'd have to find my, have my wife come and, where did this go? And I would just work on it and work on it and work on it to try to get my list together so I had a marketable list. The way I used to do that in my old firm was, about September, we start thinking about Christmas cards. 
So we send out a newsletter in September to see who changed their addresses. And then we get all these, oh, incorrect addresses. And then we go change the addresses. And then by the time October or November rolls around, I got my list together. That's how I did that for 15 years. That's all I did with that for 15 years. But I really got my list together. My list now is, six, is 16,000 people. Um, including, about, I have about 6,000 people in a class action case. I'm trying four weeks from Monday um, in, in the middle of Missouri. And I've been communicating through them, too. So get your list together. It's not just, and you can get people on your list that you don't know. It's not who you know, it's who do you want to market to. I went in and I, I put in lawyers that I don't know. And I'll tell you what I did with it in a minute. Yes, sir. I do. I tag, so Infusionsoft lets them tag you in different ways. I tag them. Some are clients, current clients, former clients, lawyers, vendors. I have people tagged for different campaigns I have. If they're an auto case, work comp, slip fall, med, med mal, and they get, I have series of different emails to teach them about their case as they go forward. But yes. But I don't overly segment. Tyson will, uh, he's, he segments so much. But the question, but the, but the type of marketing you're going to do informs you as to how much you need to divvy up the list, right? I don't have that much time to be two different emails to do for different groups. I send out, I write to everybody, like you were talking about, who do you write to? I send the same email to the smartest lawyer at Brian Cave than I do to my, to my truck driver client. I don't, because that's, because that, because that, that, the, everybody wants to be educated in the law in a straightforward manner. Um, do an e-paper or newsletter. Here you go. So I started doing it. Jim does it. He does once every week. I decided I'm going to do it every two weeks. I've done an email newsletter every two weeks since then. I have done about 60 of them in two and a little over two years. I put them all together in a book. If you want to read all of my e-newsletters, go to my website, go to my books. I put down I did a little book. Here's 54 newsletters over two years of when you're starting a firm. And you can go read them all. And I do them all myself. No one else does them. And, uh, except I've had Joe do some on, on every once in a while. Joe, Joe's one of my former, uh, former, uh, former uh, lawyers who work with me. So I do them myself. And, and you know, sometimes someone does contact. I'm putting the pictures in. I'm doing all this stuff. That's my Sunday night activity every two weeks. Um, CLEs. I read John's book, one of the books that... that, that um, that uh, Jim gave me when I first met with him was this book. And I read it. And I read about how John did CLEs in order to get connections with other lawyers, to educate people, to give back. And I took that idea from him. I don't know if many of my ideas are unique. Some are. But a lot of them are just environmentally scanning for what works for me and then take action on them. So thank you. I appreciate that. So I do CLEs. I've done six. So I do about two a year. I'm doing one next week. Um, and. Uh, we're, we're actually doing it, we're doing it, and now I've done a podcast, that's a couple of numbers now, so we're going to record the whole thing, we're going to put it in my lawyer versus lawyer podcast, it's going to be great, me and another lawyer are going to argue motions to a judge, we're going to record it all, I've done this CLE before, we have an ethics guy, we're talking about trial, we're talking about different stuff. So legal education, CLEs, like John does, he already talked about it. So you go out, and, and one of my former CLE attendees is now leaving, <laughs> sorry, not to single you out, but... <laughs> Thanks, Julie. We'll see it. So you go out and do these. You get your name out, and then and then you could then I video them. I put them on YouTube. I put them on my lawyer to lawyer page on my website where I put up my CLA materials and stuff so any lawyer can get it. Here's my brief on this. Here's how you handle liens. Here's my do this. I have lawyers call me all the time. How do I do this lien? How do I do this? Answer questions for free. Spread your knowledge. You learn stuff over time. And then, and then you don't worry about that lawyer. Well, I think I say that in a minute. Let me keep going with my numbers. I've got to make my time. Although Jim or Tyson, I may talk for like two hours. Uh, they're not here. They bailed on me. <laughs> like, respect, right? There you go. Respect. So I did it all myself at the beginning. And I think it's really important to learn. William was talking about do it on yourself. There's no way to learn how to do it by putting stuff on yourself on WordPress, tagging it, figuring it out, making those mistakes. Do Infusionsoft yourself. Do these campaigns by yourself. There's no better way to learn than to do it. And well, actually, there is. It's teaching it, too. So if you go teach it, you also have to learn everything really well, right? So do it yourself in the beginning. Look at your own Google Analytics and your own PPC claims. Figure out what, 
what areas you want to not market to. Figure out what negative keywords you want to put in so you don't get terrible leads. Keep track of where your cases are coming from. Keep track of how am I going to not get those bad calls that I spend all this time with and waste my time? What am I going to do for that? Before you use, and use Constant Contact, MailChimp, or Infusionsoft yourself, especially at the beginning, if you put in new email addresses you've never marketed to, set up a MailChimp account to do it before you put it into your main uh, Infusionsoft or other mail account, uh, MailChimp account. Because if, you, if a bunch of people unsubscribe, they'll mark you as a spammer, and you need to move that to a new URL. Infusionsoft has different um, servers that shoot out different emails depending on how good your, good your list is. Because if, it, and, and there are some firms that I am targeted as a spammer, a buddy of mine, and, and, the, and my emails, even like, hey, where's my discovery? It'll get, sh it'll, get, it'll get put into their spam just because I do these emails. A lot of them don't, and then they take it off and they understand that, yeah, I do that, but I also talk to you about cases, so that happens too. Surrender to marketing and running your business. You know, that was one of the things I did, tried to do. I'm going to talk about surrender and serenity now, right? So surrendering. We th sometimes we think as lawyers, we're too, we're too important or ivory tower or we're too smart or whatever to get in and run our business. Do people who own companies and have car washes and run gas stations do that? No, they run their business. Who, who, are, who am I to be holier than thou or better than that? No, surrender to the idea that you have to run your business. You've got to get clients, you've got to, have, you've got to run an operations of a firm, and yeah, you've got to be a trial lawyer too, but you've got to surrender to the idea. Let go of that. Let go, let God, right? Let go to the idea that you got to run your business. That's it. And nothing helped me more than that, frankly, than being my own sole practitioner. As John mentioned, as you'll hear other people mention, I don't have any excuses. It's either, either success or failure. That's the deal. It's up to me. So I didn't have anybody to blame other than myself, and that is a, is, is a motivator, right? Serenity. Remember to have serenity about what you can control and what you can't control. I can't control how many cases I'm going to have next year. There's a lot of things I can't control in the legal business. The facts of my case, how my client's going to do in a depot, what kind of jury panel I'm going to draw, what's going to happen. You think you got a great case. We have this all the time in these cases. You think you got a great case, you litigate it for a while, something happens. You know, you got to be uh, you got to be responsive to the current facts and the current picture of your case, and you, you have to have the serenity to understand what you can change and what you can't change. If you can't change it, that's the deal. Seth talked about that, square peg in a round hole. It is what it is. It's in management. It's in cases. It's in the idea about marketing, about what you can do and what you can't. If you don't have a big marketing budget, you don't. So then you're going to go do it more organically like William does, or you're going to do this or that. You're going to do what you can do, and that's okay. 23 and 24. So how do you plan things out? So I have a two-week plan, a 12-week plan. Tyson's a big advocate of the 12-week work, 12-week work year, whatever that book is, um, and a five-year plan. Five years, where am I going to be down the road? Twelve weeks, what am I doing in the next three, in the next three months? Am I going to start a podcast? Am I going to write a book? And what am I going to do? Plan those things. But you're also going to do, what am I doing in one week or two weeks? If it's the end of a week or two weeks and I haven't done something for marketing, I do it. I make myself. I said, I'm going to go cut five YouTube videos. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go write this piece. I'm going to do it. I stop doing my litigation and my, all my other stuff, and I just do it. I make myself do it. I'm going to tell you the numbers, too, about at the end, right before I give the gifts to them, about where, where I am. I went from zero, and then, to, so where am I? I'm going to tell you this in, a, in, about, in about a bunch of these, but I'm going to go through them quicker, and I'm going to be done in 23 minutes. So I read this. Do you ever read First Things First, Stephen Covey? So there's this four-quadrant thing, one, two, three, four. And the axis here is importance and time. And this is quadrant one, where we spend most of our time. It's the quick stuff that's unimportant. It's the emails. It's the text. It's the phone that John's reaching in to get right now to look at. And, 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 so, and so, and now, but what, what's quadrant four? Quadrant four is the stuff that takes the longest to do, and it's the most important. It's your marriage. 
It's your personal relationships. It's the long-term firm that you have. It's how you want to raise your kids. And we spend all of our time doing this little minutia in life, and we don't spend time on the important stuff about our relationships and about our firm and our growth and what we want to do. So you got to get out of the num quadrant one and you got to get your brain into quadrant four where you want to be big, big picture. You don't want to live in there, but you don't, want to, you don't want to ignore it as well. So those are two good ideas to think about. System, system, systems, you heard it from, you heard it from, uh, from Tyson. Systemize anything you can do more than five times. I have an email I send out to my clients before a deposition where I have three YouTube videos about how to do your deposition because I found myself saying the same thing to everybody. Everybody's nodding. You say the same thing for the first 20 minutes in a depo prep. I systematize it. I have three YouTube videos. Everybody gets that email. It checks off other boxes too. They're thinking about their depo before the day before. They start doing that. They come in. It cuts 20 minutes in time and then I can just hit the highlights and they get it. Okay, so that's an idea of a system. Or I have other things, new client systems in Infusionsoft. I have ways I want to I want to teach them because you want to be by the time you settle a case, and your client is settling a case, you want them to be an educated consumer and take your recommendations. So it's it's client expectations, and they feel like they've been communicated with. Um, don't keep grumpy clients. Okay, so you can't teach gratitude. Um, and I know I'm jumping around, but these are things you learn, right? So I can have a client where I do so great, I work so hard, I go try the case, I get a great result, and they hate me, and they don't like me, and because that's their gratitude level. I can have a client where I get it, I turn, it pretty, turn the case pretty quickly, and I get an okay result, but not a great result, because they wanted the money now versus two years from now, and they love me, and I'm the best thing that ever happened to them. So think about that. I share off, so when I moved out of my, when I got kicked out of my office, not kicked out, one of, one of us is going to leave, I left. I went with my old buddy I've known forever, and he's my smartest and most successful friend. He used to own the building right there, I'm looking at it. So I moved into his building, and he told me one time, he said, you know, every other business, when you run a business, you periodically go through and you, and you, um, you cut your 10% worse, your 10% worse properties, your worse cars that you're selling the worst, the slowest line on your assembly plant. Whatever you're doing, occasionally you go through and you look at it and you get rid of your 10 worst. So think about that. Who's your 10, the clients that are sucking up the time or, or the areas of the practice or something like that? Why do you want, and do you know, and do you think they just take 10% of your time? No, you know the answer to that. So that's, that's a management idea. And it took me forever to learn that and implement it. And I'm kind of implementing it, I'm trying to, right? Market yourself to other lawyers. Market yourself to outside clients on the internet and other places. So you got to think of where you're going to market and how you market yourself to lawyers. Which it, and so and that and and have a lunch list. So I have a lunch list on my phone, which is a note that literally says lunch list, because I get so busy, and it's not a it's it's kind of marketing, but it's kind of also because you know I'm so busy with kids and all the stuff I do. Here's my lunch list. There it is. Boom. And I just put people's names in there because I forget. And I look through, I'm like, oh, I really like that guy. He's hilarious. I've never talked business with him. I never will, but I want to I wanna do that. And, and I got that because one of the books that Jim gave me is a book about how, he, how to create a business, an amazing business, just by having lunches. And that's all. And it's a great book. I read it. And so I have a lunch list. So I, I do that. What's the book? Never Eat Alone. Never eat alone. Thank you. Yeah. Never. And so. But have real, genuine relationships. Having these relationships with people is not about getting cases. That'll either come or it won't come. I don't know. And I have these lunches and these relationships with lawyers or clients or friends. We're, I'm, uh, you know, I'm here to talk about them when we talk about our kids and our family and what crazy things we're doing in life and how, what our challenges are. I, you know, you, you, you don't sit there. If, if you lead with... Um, Oh, this, yeah, if it's, if, uh, you know, it's kind of karma-ish. It's not quid pro quo. Have the relationship and don't worry about the cases. The energy you're putting out in the universe is the energy you're going to get back. I'm a real believer in that. Not in some too, too touchy-feely way a little bit, but, I mean, it's true, you know, because if you have some guy who's trying to sell you, we get these, call, I get emails every day and phone calls every day, someone trying to send me cases or, 
I'm going to do your SEO or I'm going to do that. You know, I don't want to listen to any of those people because they're trying to sell me something. And if you come to people trying to sell them something and trying to get a certain number of cases, they ain't going to do it. It's, it's, they're going to smell you. Get Google reviews. You already heard about that. We're, you know, they're really good, um, and, and it's something you do in a, as part of your system, as part of, your, of, of, of doing that. I do things like when, when I send my settlement letter to my client, I have a paragraph in there, Google reviews and ratings are really important. Could you please review me? This is how you do it. I, have, I keep a list of people. I have an email where I say, hey, you're my buddy. You want to Google review me. Can you take a minute out? You can get a link to a five-star Google review, and where they click the link, it goes through, it populates five stars, and they write something. You can get that. And it's something you grow over time. I know we were talking about this competition between Tice and I at the end, but my view of Google reviews has always been a slow growth over time. Where are you? Do it. You want genuine, real reviews. Um, and that's a whole, that can be a whole seminar in and of itself. I did one with John in his, in, his, um, in his mastermind group. There's the link. Yelp, Facebook, and other reviews. I have some Facebook. I almost have no Yelp. I kind of gave up on that. They're really, they're really I've, I've done them before and then they get rid of them. So I really don't do a lot on Yelp. I don't know if you all do. I'm sure it's good. I just kind of, I don't have time. I had to concentrate on one thing. And, uh, and so that's what I did. Have your social media presence, all right? Hang out with other like-minded lawyers like this. Surround yourself by these kinds of people who, I mean, I think I do all this stuff, but I come here and I'm making notes and I'm motivated and it's great and I learn so much stuff and I think I'm doing stuff and I come here and I'm like, boy, there's a lot of stuff I got to do still, right? Um, listservs, Facebook, podcasts, that kind of stuff. If you don't save up money, don't just throw money at these systems, right? So. Find the cheapest space available. Don't spend money on nicer, fancy letterhead or these kinds of things. Um, big case management s systems. Expensive SEO <coughs> companies or high-end stuff. Until you make the money where that is a good business practice for you. Don't. I've seen firms, I've seen people start off businesses and stuff. What case management software I do? You know what, I, I mean, I use a Google Sheet. And I have other systems in place, but I don't go out and spend a bunch of money on that. Now, I don't want the vendor to hear, right? No, but maybe I think I probably need to, and, I, and, I sh and I'm ready to move to that. But don't um, be careful investing that. I mean, Tyson's super cheap. I mean, he doesn't have, he does all, he, do, he does all this stuff. I mean, I, I, I hate to, that's a compliment to him. No, but you got to watch those expenses because it's your bottom line. Keep, keep an eye on that. Um, so I made it to year two. That's what we did in the first year, right? All right, so build up your systems. You're, you're getting in cases, you have people, you're doing stuff. Build up your systems. Do you have a firm handbook or guidelines that you use to show your staff process? Tweak your systems. When you start out your system, system, systems, you're invariably gonna find that they're gonna fail or you mess something up or you did something wrong or the people need to be retrained or even though you told them that or had a thing on it, they forgot about it because people are people. And so you need to work on those systems. Keep them working. Monitor them. And it's the last thing you want to do. It's the last thing I want to do. I want to go out. I want to take depots. I took a depot yesterday. I left here at 2 o'clock, went and took a depot, and then came back. I was in court this morning. That's why I wanted to wear this fancy suit and, and with another lawyer. Um, so you, that's the last thing you want to do, but that's what you have to do. Increase your marketing and clients and activity. Increase this stuff as you're going forward. You're going to do your newsletters. All right, now what are you going to add? Now what are you going to add? Now what are you going to add? Not manically, but slowly. All right, 90 days from now, I want to have this many Google reviews. I'm going to start this system. I wrote this one book. Now I'm going to do another book. This is the next subject I'm going to do. You keep increasing, keep moving, keep action. Keep doing things. And don't don't, uh, it's not like an overwhelming, oh my God, I got all this stuff to do. Take it, take it easy and do it. So you have a three jobs in a law firm. You're a trial lawyer, a firm manager, and a marketer. You got to do all those three things. And each week I say, have I done those three? Don't market your, uh, run your business so much that for you forget your craft. The best marketing is good lawyering. Tyson wants to try 20, 250 cases in 10 years. I tried five or six cases my first year out. Go and try cases, go do these things. Other lawyers see how you do it. Work on your craft, work on how to argue, work on how to anchor in the 
physical place and use your arms when you talk and blah, 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 right? Um, so great lawyering is great marketing because folks see that you know, you're, you know it. You know what you're talking about. You know, I, I had never done a YouTube video and I have a lot now, but I, I knew all this stuff. I know how to do leans and I have all these tricks. I have these spreadsheets and all this stuff. And I just started sharing it and teaching it and, then, and doing it and people see it and then they and then that attracts them. It's a policy of attra it's marketing by attraction, right? Don't watch your message. Don't fall into lawyer stereotypes. Don't be the um, Lionel, remember from the Simpsons, Lionel Putz, the lawyer commercials and all this stuff. Don't be that lawyer. Watch our image as lawyers. There are, you know, a few, everybody sees the bad lawyer image and then that, that's what people think of us. You know, these plaintiff's lawyers, these ambulance chasers. Every, every jury I pick, we, we talk about that. We need to safeguard our reputation as lawyers and do the right thing and do that. So have that message doing your marketing. Um, it really is good for the profession, everybody, and that's attractive. Um, and I say it right there. The more you give, the more you get. Let go, all right, and then the other thing is, so you're gonna make mistakes. <laughs> I make mistakes regularly, probably today in this speech, right? Let go of that. Let go of the fear of error. Uh, yeah, you guys, who, has anybody seen Alexander Hamilton, that thing? So there's this song, I've seen it a couple times, we read the book and all that. George Washington had many battles and killed a lot of people because he led these, he made so many errors on the battlefield early in his days. It was. It was error after error after error. We know him now as the brilliant, successful first president. And there's one of the songs in Alexander Hamilton talks about that. And there's a million examples of that. The only way I've learned stuff, frankly, is the mistakes I made. That's really how it brings it home to me. So don't be afraid to do that, right? You're going to do that. And, and just surrender to that as well. Uh, don't Also, don't procrastinate. Don't use that fear of, is this the perfect article? Is this the perfect article? No, get it out. I'm a big believer in my firm. Get it out, get it out. We file pleadings and briefs and all this stuff. You gotta get it out, you gotta get it filed, you gotta get it done. Um, just do it. Someone else had the swoosh here earlier today. Um, and give away what you learn, like the folks speaking at this conference. So, maintain all your good, so, so now you're keeping going. Maintain your good systems, I already said that. Add people to your lunch list, crank out newsletters. Writing notes and cards, uh, Tyson's brilliant at that. Keep blogging, video, and writing books. Come up with new and novel ideas. I decided that I, this opioid epidemic is really aggravating me and as well. So I started an opioid website. Um, <laughs> I bought the URL. I put it up. I write on it. I put a page on my site. We have a number of cases. We're suing doctors and opioid manufacturers for uh, for product defects and, and, the, and the pain management doctors that overprescribe, addict these people and then leave them out to dry. Some of these stories are terrible. And I've tried that. And I think it's working. We'll see. I think it's tough cases. I'm going to have to fight these folks, right? But you know what? It's an idea I had. I'm going to run with it. I'm going to see how it goes. So keep uh, ticket giveaways to, for friends to try to get friends on Facebook. We talked about newspapers today, speaking at law schools or other organizations. I started a podcast called Lawyer v. Lawyer. I've done 14 episodes, me and a defense lawyer, a Southern uh, a woman uh, who's just a great personality. She's a defense lawyer. I'm a plaintiff's lawyer. We go back and forth, lawyer v. lawyer. We talk about issues. I had the idea. I got, the, I got lawyer v. lawyer.com. We put up a web page. I stole Tyson, the idea of a podcast from Tyson and Jim. And, I just, and we did it, and we've launched it. And on Tuesday, the 29th, we're having a CLE where we're recording it and doing a bunch of episodes and stuff. It's great. We're just kind of going with it and doing what we can. We'll see. Coffee cups, water bottles, those are great little stuff. I, had, I have a folder where I give, it's, it's not like a shock and awe package, but I have a folder with all, I have, there's all the articles about some big results I have that I give to clients too. Like when I meet with them, it's an embossed folder. It looks good. It's got articles about all these results because I don't want to, to have them have buyer's remorse after leaving me. It's not just the 30-day thing that Tyson um, talked about, but sometimes people have buyer's remorse when they decide on you as a lawyer and they want to go somewhere else. You want to give them some stuff so they stay with you. Um, start a podcast, I did it. Campaigns, um, so I have different um, campaigns for different cases, I mentioned that. So my, my clients get four emails in about seven days, and then, it, then, they, tr then they go into my um, and, and other campaigns I have to kind of educate them over time. 
I try to tell them the contact information, don't give statements, here's who you're talking to, call us if something changes, et cetera. YouTube videos. I do YouTube videos. I, ha I have my numbers here. I have a card here somewhere. So I have, um, uh, so I've done YouTube videos. I have more than Jim, but I have a lot less views. Um, and, uh, and I started doing them. I, do them. I don't do them over a green screen. I have 206, so I think I remember all my numbers. When I started my firm, I had 50 cases. In August of 2016, I have 80. Today, I have 307 uh, current pending cases. Um, I started with zero Google, zero YouTube videos. I now have 260. I started out with zero newsletters. I have 60. Um, I started out with zero Facebook reviews, and I'm over, zero Google reviews. I'm over 300. Um, I have 14 podcasts. Uh, I, do an e I do an email at the end of the year where I, I do the numbers by the year, uh, number of kids, blah, 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 you know, all this stuff. Numbers, I'm a big <laughs> scuba diver, how many dives I did that year, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so I'm going to have a kid on Monday. So, uh, so not, not, I, I am, I'm, I'm blessed. Um, so it's true, yeah. You know, I only speak the truth. I only speak the truth. Yes. My wife texted me this morning. Thank you. Yes. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed to find my amazing wife, Kristen. Uh, Avo Justi of Fine Law and Super Lawyers. Um, and and, and when, you, when you're doing these newsletters, let me talk about these newsletters for a second, because I only have five minutes and 51 seconds. But you're back, so I, gotta, I was going to go over the time. I talk about myself. I talk about myself. I'm an avid scuba diver. I talk about that. I'm a scuba instructor. Mike's, there's a lawyer who is with me today. I was in a motion hearing this morning. Me and another lawyer are dive masters. We dive at this mine down in Bon Terre, Missouri. And I, I work there. I take people out scuba diving, and I'm a cave diver and stuff. That's what I like to do, one of the things I like to do. Mike is a lawyer in Chicago, hired me for a case because my scuba diving buddy had a case against him years ago. And, and said that, I'm, that he needs to hire me if he comes to St. Louis to file this big, we have this hopefully big case. You never know where these connections come from. Mitch talks about that. You never know where you register with people. So in my newsletters, if you look at them, I talk about myself a little bit. I talk about some of my case results and a little bit of the law. I don't bore with law. And I create good ideas. I talk about all kinds of stuff. And just things, and people love them. And, I have, and there's just people come and talk to me by my emails all the time. I, didn't I did Avo a little bit. Justy, I haven't done fine law. I haven't done super lawyers. I do some of that because I'm a super lawyer. I don't know if they work. I did more AVO before. I don't do it as much anymore. I don't find it works as much. I don't know how much super lawyers works, but these are the, your, some of your other platforms you can do. Sprint, um, don't pay for case leads. These companies call you all the time. Give me blah, blah, th something a month or whatever, and I'm going um, to give you case leads. And, and uh, don't do it. Spend the money to SEO and promote your own brand. I Googled myself. We were Googling some stuff like two days ago, and someone did a paid advertisement on my name. Did you? Yeah. Is it the people in Chicago? So I call them up. Do you, if you get this, I get people who pay on to, be, to, be, to be seen with me. And I call them up, and I say, hey, dude, do you know you're doing this? And, and, and I've, this has happened to me for years, and they always take it down. I don't yell. I say, you don't want to do this, man. Come on. Da, da, da. Like, oh, I didn't know my PPC was person was doing it, blah, blah, blah. If you had, oh, yesterday, my ex-partner started doing an ad on my name. I showed you that. Remember, Annika? Anyway, I called him up, and I said, why are you doing You don't want to do this. Da, 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 da. So anyway, I called the people that just did this. It's, and I, ha I was looking on my phone. I have the picture. I call him up. He says, I don't have any lawyers in Missouri. And I'm thinking, that's unauthorized practice of law. You can't do that. And so I have his name, and I got all his information. And then he asked me if I wanted, he wanted to send me the cases. I'm like, no, dude, you're advertising on my name. I'm not doing that. Um, billboards, TV, and mass advertisement didn't work for me. You need to have a backup back system to do it. Base, best cases typically come from referrals. A third, a third, a third. It's my gut in the market, and I'm no expert, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. And that I think, you know, but God, I think a third of cases go to the big, big TV advertisers. I suspect that a third in my area of cases go to someone who knows their own family lawyer, friend, family, go to another lawyer, and then that lawyer refers it. 
and maybe a third of cases come from the internet. That's my gut. I, Seth and other people would know a lot more than me. Maybe I'm a little bit off on some of the numbers, but so I'm not going to do the third on TV or bus or radio. But what I am going to try to do is work on that other two thirds, right? So I, I want to know where I'm marketing. That's how I think. And all this stuff is how I'm thinking about this. It's not uh, pay co-counsel fees under Rule 1.5e if you're, if you're allowed to do that in your state. Be on boards and organizations. My philosophy on boards and organizations is I don't want any benefit from it from me personally. I don't just do the legal stuff. I do that. I want to go serve. I'm on the Board of Legal Services of Eastern Missouri. I, used to be, I was on the board of Planned Parenthood for 10 years. I don't want to inject politics, but that's, to me, I, there's, there's, I like to be on boards where it's a selfless thing. I'm doing to help the community, and that's what it's about. Um, write e-books. I've written, oh, numbers. I've written four books in two years, um, and I've published all of them and done all of them for less than 200 bucks. They're on my website. You get them. You get a link to them. They give them you a PDF, and then you're in my system, and you get my emails every two weeks. And, and you do that. I, t I, t I have a work comp, auto accident, PI, and the one on my, uh, on my newsletters. I got a minute and 22 seconds. Credentials, like super lawyers and every radio are good. Folders with newsletters, I told you that. Lawyer, two lawyers, the stuff where I put the stuff I do in my CLEs and stuff, I put it up so anybody can get it. Any other lawyers wants my brief on this, my memo on this, how to strike an expert, depots that I've done, that kind of stuff. Surround yourself with people you want to be around. I saw an interview with the CEO of Uber who gave three rules, and one of them was only surround yourself by people you want to be around. Brilliant. And then my <laughs> paralegal typed this. You've got to edit your PowerPoints better. <laughs> Number 74, choose your life. I went to a landmark forum one time. Choose your life. Choose the partners, the business, the spouses. Choose what you want to have in your life or get rid of it to have the courage to do that. And that's a little bit touchy-feely, but it's really true. And that's what you're all here to do. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here. Uh, on all this stuff, I'm preaching to the choir. Joe. What's the uh, height of the bench? What's the distance I don't know. Probably her. <laughs> I have, a pay, have all your people on your websites. Because you know, mo a lot of my Google reviews are about how amazing Casey is, because she is. I've been with her for 10 years. She's great. We get along with each other. Um, which Joe, can say, Joe knows is not, not easy to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, do the kind of practice you want. So I wanted to, uh, so now I, because of Jim and Tyson's amazing, ama I got a minute and eight, I, I truly have a debt of gratitude to Jim and Tyson because they selflessly taught me all, sit down, se <laughs> se they selflessly <laughs> taught me, I got the black, what's in the bag? What's in the bag? Woo, woo. So they selflessly taught me, and they, and they motivated me. Tyson is extremely motivating. He was at a big advertising firm, and then he went out and started his own thing. He is, works tirelessly. He's the nicest giver kind of guy, and all it does is want to make me give it back to him. He calls me about cases. I say, do this, this, and this. What do you need? I call him for stuff. He's a giver, and looks what it's done for him in his life. Jim is the same way. Jim loves marketing. When, he, when they asked the percentage thing, I knew it was 100%. Jim could market anything. He's brilliant at it, and he does it. Um, so thank you to both of them. So, so when Jim gets, so the presents I have are two presents. I got 11 seconds. First one is Jim gave me all these books. I never returned them to him. So here's, my book, here's the books that Jim gave me. And this would be a lot funnier if Jim was here. Um, so these are all the books that Jim gave me two years ago when I met with him. Literally, these are the books that, he, that I took from him, and I started reading about this, and I started doing that. Including in this, and this I didn't know this, I read this last night. Including in this is this, and I'd like to read you something. This is a note that he wrote to Jim in 2000 and probably 2014. Jim, I'll be rooting you I'll be rooting for you for 2014 GLM Marketer of the Year and sign John Fisher. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Yep. So, so these are the books that Jim gave me, and he, and he just, just selfless gave me, and I never returned them. So I thought it'd be kind of funny to return them to him. And now, with my 14 seconds remaining, could, Tyson, could you come up here, please? Clock is messed up. You keep saying you have a minute Seven, and a minute. Seven, six, and five, four. Tyson... Tyson is such a good is such a good man. I would like to award Tyson a trophy. 
I'm not joking. I don't joke. I only speak the truth to juries, to everybody, I especially when I ask this. for money. I would like to award Tyson, the Tyson, Tyson Mutrix second place Google review winner. <laughs> I, I am first place because what happened was Tyson said it's on and he called me a wuss and all this stuff and said that I couldn't do it. And you know what? You don't mess with the kid. So, so, so here you go. So here's Tyson's second Here place go. trophy. That's right. <laughs> This is fantastic. For a short, diminutive man, he does a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. Thanks, everybody. That's all I got. If you.